Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in Rain Swept, an absolutely brilliant adventure slash murder mystery game developed by Frostwood Interactive, published by Two Awesome Studio and is available for normally £8.39. We play as Detective Stone, a hard rugged man with a shady past. Sorry, sorry, that's just an advert for every Netflix show ever, isn't it? <laughs> no, but we do actually play as Detective Stone, who is hired to solve the brutal slayings of Chris and Diane's surname. That's not their actual surname, of course, but we don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> but it is a thoroughly enjoyable game with a compelling, intense and thrilling story about what actually happened and who was behind it. As for the achievements, a lot are easily story related. There are only a few missable ones and we don't even need to finish the entire game game to grab them all although I do highly suggest you do as again it is absolutely brilliant. Now at the time of recording there is one glitched achievement that isn't unlocking but I will explain more when we get to it but hopefully it will be fixed rather quickly and for the meantime I just I do quickly nip through the dialogue but again I suggest you read through it all as honestly you will get absolutely hooked. But with that being said then let us begin. So then, as you've seen, uh, Chris, the guy who we are investigating, well, solving his murder, clearly seemed to have shot himself, but obviously it will not be as easy as that. So here we are then, Big Debt Stone, and this is sort of a, you know, have a feel free, you'll unlock your first achievement getting to, to Pineview, um, but have a feel free to sort of walk around, you press the right bumper to sprint, so you won't be walking this slow, thankfully. Um, you press the Y button to uh, interact with things and then press the right bumper to sort of switch between uh, things of interest. Obviously it's the B button then to uh, view things, the A button to actually interact with things and then the X button to talk to people. And just to be clear then, there is an achievement for talking to absolutely everyone, everybody possible on the first day so that's why I'm just having a little mosey around here for the moment just making sure that there's there was no uh, policeman or no crowd or anyone we had to talk to so that is fine but what we are doing then is just inspecting the open window and then talking to the police officer on the right so just smash through all the dialogue you can with him again it's the A button to smash through all the dialogue if you wanted to but as I said earlier it's definitely worth just having a look through it gets Intensely interesting. Very interesting. So once you're done with him, actually go up to the house, walk up to the door, 
Should I go in? Yes, we should, because there's not a lot for us to do out here now. We've already solved the first case of getting there. So as you can see then, it's pretty, um, I bet the smell's bad in there, but it looks pretty gruesome anyway. So what we'll be doing then, just go all the way to the left, talk to the police officer first after your little uh, meltdown right here. And I love that the one officer's just like, bruh, you okay? That's right, just losing my head a bit, that's all kid, I've had a rough and shady past, don't you know? So, so anyway, just uh, bat, batter through all the dialogue that you can at the minute. Sort of remain silent whenever you can. And then at the very, very end, just reply sarcastically. I'll let you know when we get to it. But just go through all the dialogue options a minute. Remain silent, as I said, where you can. That's literally if you wanted to just um, get through the game a little bit quicker. But of course, if you don't mind it, then ask him all the questions anyway. So you didn't actually have to question their abilities if you didn't want to, but, you know, I mean, I guess it just makes us look like more of a hard loner, I suppose, then. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But this is where we will reply sarcastically. The next option, you'll all have, you'll all, every option will be numbered. So, number two, sarcastic reply. Keep doing a good job, guys, yeah. Hilarious sarcasm there. Right, so that bit's done anyway. Now we're going to have a little look around. So first things first, go to the right and inspect the pistol next to Chris on the floor there. I do go and have a little chat with this cop. Again, you don't have to do that, but then, of course, it's um, it's for the talking to everyone on the first day achievement. So, you know, better to be safe than sorry. So we will inspect the pistol in just a minute, but there's uh, a little Chris96 signature over there, which is... Always weird and fascinating and interesting first, so we'll inspect that one first, then to the right, inspect the pistol, and then you can open up the barrel. Ooh, don't you feel all detective-y and stuff so far? I did. I felt a cue. So after this then, have a look at the drawer just above where Chris is lying. And then we'll have a look at actual Chris himself, and we'll start to make some deductions and be better than CSI, bro. Yes, damn right. But, uh, by the way, you can do, you know, any anything in, in any room in sort of any order, as long as they're all done. There's nothing... There's no sort of evidence or anything that you should miss, because the sort of um, points of interest, the magnifying glasses, are very, very obvious. But, again, I'll obviously point them out to you, just in case, anyway because it could still be quite easy to miss one. So once we're done deducing things here, take a look at the red wine on the table. Not a wine guy myself, tastes of, um, tastes of pee, frankly. I'll just stick with gin, rum, whiskey, the hard man stuff. But, <laughs> but hey, people like what they like, and I respect that. So we've inspected everything over there, now we're just going to go and inspect Diane's body. And she looks a bit rough, to be honest. She didn't have a good night, did she? More deductions? So then once you're done, now we can talk to the police officer. Now we can leave. We've done all we can out here. So that gets us achievement number two, a keen eye. Happy days. That's already two out of 13. So now we'll just go to the right, talk to Mr. Willis. You know, the sort of... Looks like the type who's sort of smoking drugs, looking out the window and just um, catching everything at the right time because he's got nothing better to do. Um, but yeah, so with <laughs> Mr. Willis, drink the coffee and then just pick each option once. And again, sort of remain silent where you possibly can.
So that's the end of Mr. Willis. We do get an achievement for questioning him. And by the way, I only said about the whole smoking drugs thing because he literally said that himself. So it's not me being judgmental. It's <laughs> it's me copying what he says in the game. Right, so a, few, a little bit more dialogue now. Uh, when possible, we will choose... Um, we don't know the complete picture yet, which is number three. So pick that one. I don't think there's too much difference in the terms of um, whatever response you give. Obviously, that there will be a bit of a different dialogue. But, hey, it's just the one that sort of, you know, gets us through the game a little bit quicker. Gets the gets us the picture a lot quicker, if that makes sense. Yes. And when we're on the drive, choose number two. Yeah, that's a surprise. I actually don't, because I uh, messed it up. I was just um, trying to flick through it. But, yeah, that's the one you should choose now. So, number two, when it comes up, yes, that's a surprise. By the way, another thing I do love about this game is just the, the, sometimes the calming music. I think the score was absolutely brilliant in this. It's just so relaxing, calming, and then tense at the appropriate moments. And the whole background and the whole the design of the game just feels nice, smooth, and it looks absolutely fantastic in all fairness. So here we are then at Jack's Auto Repair Shop. We will go and have a little chat with him. And eventually we will need to agree and go ahead and interact with the toolbox. He's needing a little tool from there. Literally, that's not our job. That's his job, surely. But, hey, what can I say? We get an achievement out of it eventually anyway. So we can't complain. So go to the right then when you're finished with Jack. The toolbox is literally right there. But we need to get a key because it's actually locked. Which, I mean, once again, you'd think he'd have a key on him. But... I mean, the dude obviously fixed his car, so he's obviously good at his job. Unless he's like a Danny DeVito from Matilda, where he just does it very dodgily and everyone uh, <laughs> everyone gets pissed off in the end. But the key is just to the left, behind the car. Now we can go back all the way to the right. And then go ahead and grab the big red wrench. Not the blue one, take the big red wrench. And now we can give it back to Jack, which will get us the achievement. So don't go to Diane. She's just uh, Diane. Sorry, she's the uh, she's the dead lady. I was just having a to be honest. I was just having a look, seeing if there's any more people to have a little chat with. But it is just us three at the minute. So go to Jack, press the Y button, and that way you will actually give him the wrench and the achievement. And now we can just go ahead and end the conversation. We don't need to know about anything else, so end that. And then just go ahead and pick all of these three dialogue options here. And once Big Jack is dealt with then, don't go to the right yet, because we can't actually go anywhere, as you can probably see. Go to the left, talk to Officer Blunt. The joke writes itself in that, I'm not even going to say anything. <laughs> but go ahead, talk to her, just ask her if she's okay, and then apologise. Because you're a nice guy, Deadstone. Even with the hard, rugged past, you are a nice guy. So just apologise for the accident right here. And then she's going to say, you know, what the hell happened? Say, I thought I saw something, which is number two. 
a person. So this is where we get to start seeing uh, Detective Stone's past and his life, which again, I love how they've interlinked it. It's not just a typical murder mystery, try and solve the mystery, job done. We get to really see what the hell has happened in this guy's past. And again, I think it's just another nice little detail in here. Uh, choose I won't. Number one, I won't. And then we can move on to the main town area. So as you probably just seen, you'll press up on the D-pad to have a look at the map, press right on the D-pad to have a look at our objectives and what you've actually got to do next. So this is the map, it's only a small little map, but it is, I mean it's fairly obvious where we've got to go anyway, obviously I'll point this all out. So we're going to go ahead and talk to the man in red right here and he will talk about the man in black, the shady looking... I mean, I don't know if you want to call him a hipster or if he's just really cool. I don't know. Looks dodgy though, doesn't he? But you can have a little long conversation with this guy. So again, we'll just smash through all the dialogue. Uh, exhaust all the options as well. And remember, we still need to talk to everybody on the first day. So everyone in this main street, have a look at, uh, see if you can talk to them. And then obviously, if you can talk to them, make sure you talk to them. It's obviously not too far, you know, less than 20 minutes anyway. If you do end up missing the achievements, it's not too far to get into it. Uh, but this old man right here is a legend. A horny legend, if you want to call him that. <laughs> I'm surprised it still works at his age, but hey, there's uh, many pharmaceutical drugs out there now for problems such as um, limp penis. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, just go through all the dialogue options anyway, just in case. Thank <laughs> you. 
So once we're done with father horniness right here, go to the woman. Let's see if what she says. No, she's not really interested in all fairness. Which, you know, I mean, he owns a donut shop. He owns a bakery. Come on, girl. There's not many, not many old guys that own a bakery. <laughs> but just talk, talk to the old lady. Talk to the young boy there. And then we can just nip on all the way to the right. And then we'll be able to talk to Father Smith. And, I mean, just look at that. I mean, look at that. That is a beautiful sight. That is absolutely Something so simplistic can always look the most beautiful. You know, they don't need dis anything too distracting in there. And that, honestly, just, there's so many moments like that in this game where it just, just t does genuinely take your breath away. So anyway, we have got Father Smith. He tried running away from me, the cheeky git. Hiding kids in the basement, eh? Um, no. Uh, say it's peaceful when we get to it. Uh, ooh, controversial. Yep, yeah, say it's peaceful and then just exhaust all the dialogue options. It does kind of look a bit hilariously creepy when their eyes sort of disappear and they've got nothing on their face. <laughs> like a ventriloquist doll or something. But anyway, we are done with the old father. Now let's run all the way back down the hill and we will just interact with the first street sign that we come across, which is called Overlook Road, which literally should be around five seconds from here. It's around there somewhere. Remember to press right bumper to sprint if you haven't figured that out already, even though I'm sure I did tell you. But for some reason, Officer Blunt's not staying with us. I don't know where she's off. Not that I'm wanting an affair or anything, but, you know. But that's it. We did talk to everyone on the first day. So anyone on here now, you can talk to them if you want, but it really, really doesn't matter. So we got that achievement for talking to everybody on the first day, as I said. So now we can just run all the way to the right until we get to our hotel. Just enjoy the views, just enjoy the music, because honestly, it's just, oh, amazing. Right then, so we've got a few small things to do first. Go and take a dump or go and take a pee. You know, I'm sure by now you must um, kind of be dying for it. So go ahead, do that. Lovely. Relieve yourself. You know, there's nothing better than sitting down half hour on the toilet and looking at memes on your phone. Although his head's a little bit more serious than mine. Uh, go into this little uh, cupboard desk drawer thing right here and change into your sleepwear. That will unlock us another achievement for... Uh, changing our clothes you can wear whatever you want but you know i just i just chose sleepwear because we're going to bed obviously <laughs> then you well we need to turn off the light first because that's what you usually do when you go to bed so don't go to bed straight away because we can't anyway so t turn off the lights and then go to bed and then what will happen is we are going to enter like a dreamlike state now and it's going to be, well, you know, for, again, from here, we're going to start unraveling his own mind. So there's not an awful lot to do here. You just go all the way to the right and then interact with the grave when we get to it. Spam the Y button as 
much and hard and fast as you can. And then we are in now a sleep paralysis. Paralysis? Paralysis. You know, the, the sort of bit where you can't move. Uh, I've never had it, but personally it looks absolutely horrible. So try to move your head, your arms and your legs. Just go from one to three. And then a ghostly female called Abigail will appear. At the, obviously at the moment we don't know who this is. Seems like his wife what we're thinking of at the minute, but you know, that's bound to shit you up at any point, isn't it? That is bound. See, it wasn't my fault first. Number two, it wasn't my fault. And then we will admit it later. There it is. The only option you can choose, it was my fault. And that's that then for this bit. But we will also get another achievement called Nightmare for Surviving Said Sleep Paralysis or Paralysis or whatever. <laughs> whatever it's called, but still. If anyone's ever gone through that, god damn, I feel sorry for you because it just seems so horrible. Right then, so now we've finally woken up from that nightmare. Nightmare achievement unlocked. Go ahead, get dressed again. You can choose whatever you decide to choose. I'm sticking with the classic because I'm a classic kind of guy. Sort of. Well, I don't know what I am. A bit nuts, apparently. But we are going to leave right now. And we are off to the coffee shop. Mark's coffee shop to meet our blunt-headed friend, Officer Blunt. So we'll have a little conversation and then just after that's done, go all the way to the left, ask Mark right here for a nice coffee on a warm day. I'm not trying to place adverts or anything, it just it just seems like that, doesn't it? So he's going to try and talk to you about the investigation, be all like, son, let's get back to making coffee. Go ahead, pick it up then, lovely stuff. Talk to the uh, depressed man on the table right here, he's a bit... Well, I, I don't even know what he is, but we will tell him that it is not that simple. We'll say, does coffee hold any answers? Say then, it's not that simple, and then just sit down next to Officer James Blunt's sister. By the way, that's just... For anyone that doesn't know, James Blunt is a very high, squeaky-voiced English singer. And hilarious on Twitter. So we will then talk to Blunt, discuss the case, and then we will visit the crime scene. Choose the option, visit the crime scene. So then we're just going to have to walk to the right a little bit, talk to the guy in black, Alan, which is uh, Mark's brother, which he was talking about earlier. So we're just going to exhaust all the dialogue options here for a moment, see what this guy got to say. So now we can just freely and very happily move on to the left until we see a street sign with 
Aspen on it, that one right there. So just uh, press A to interact with it and we'll automatically go down there. Now we'll be talking to the skateboarding little dude on the right hand side right there. Again, we'll just exhaust all the dialogue options that we can with him. And then we can continuously just walk to the left until we get to the crime scene. Now again, if you did want to talk to a lot of people, the questions Stone asks are pretty much relatively the same. But it's always, again, very interesting, like in real life, to hear different sort of perspectives and different sides and different views from different people. So, you know, obviously we don't need to talk to them, but if you want to, to get um, different opinions, etc. and views, like I said, it's definitely worth doing. Now there is a missable achievement coming up, we will be inspecting Chris and Diane's room and the achievement is for, uh, it's called Thorough and that is for inspecting absolutely every single item in their room. So everything with an interaction point on it, the magnifying glass, make sure to do it. Um, so interact with the mirror first, that's all you got to put, uh, and then say kind of, number one kind of, she's on about if you had a lot of sleep and mm -hmm. as we know, he didn't, no, he really, he literally really didn't. Then have a look at the sort of chest of drawers underneath the mirror. You know, there won't be anything to sort of have a look at. It'll just be little passing comments. Have a look at the photograph and the nightstand that the uh, photograph is on. So then, have a little look at the painting above the bed. This will come in handy in just a moment for various reasons. Then have a look at the unmade bed. I mean, there's not going to be anyone there to make it, so that's why it's pretty much a maid. Awkward. Uh, have a look at the right nightstand right there. That is locked. And then have a look at the... Just take, make sure to have a little look at the photograph on the right. You know, don't go too fast. Take it nice and slow. Just make sure that you've interacted with absolutely everything. And then have a look actually inside the bin as well. There's going to be a few things that he sees. Blunt is still looking at that bulletin board, which we're going to do. And have a look at the bookshelf first. And then have a look at the stereo just underneath the bulletin board. And then have a look at the actual bulletin board. There's going to be a little bit of sort of deducing. And then as soon as you've got an option to choose either Chris or Diane, just assume that Chris has written the notes. And then we will look behind the painting above the bed. So the first option will be Chris to choose. So there we go then. Have a look at the painting above the bed. This is where we actually get the key. I mean, he could have just looked himself a little bit earlier on, but there we go. And then unlock the right nightstand. And now, not only do we unlock the achievement for Thorough, searching everything in uh, Chris and Diane's room, now we will see for the first time how Chris and Diane actually met. Another brilliant sort of intertwining little story in this game. So we're now playing as Chris for a moment, as soon as we can, move all the way to the left, get out of that party, and you say, hey, screw you guys, if there's no alcohol, it's just a pointless party, isn't it? 
So just wait here until Diane comes out, but we don't know it's Diane yet, even though I just told you it's Diane. Now there is quite a lot of dialogue here. Um, a few answers we're gonna have to be doing. You can either choose what you want. I don't think it makes too much of a difference, um, but obviously you can it, just copy exactly what I do to, you know, better to be safe than sorry, isn't it? But yeah, just choose the, the answers that I do and then we will move on and you will see something, again, absolutely spectacular at the end of all this. Ah, oh, come on. That is another one of those breathtaking moments I said earlier in this game. That was just... Like, that's, not a ba that's not a bad party, really, is it? You meet the potential love of your life, and that view... Uh... Man, that looked good. That looks stunning. So, there we go, then. There's the story of how Chris and Diane first met. We're going to have a little moment where he sort of lands on his head. That looks like it hurts as well, to be honest. Um... <laughs> But now we end up actually in the cafe, not the hospital, not the doctors or anything. No, we end up back in the cafe. You need a good lot of caffeine down you, my friend. But um, <laughs> when we do get here, just tell Blunt that we tripped and we knocked ourselves out and then tried to convince her to stay in Pineview.
Oop, and there he comes Officer Douchebag, ruining the moment. Just trying to offload all my problems onto Officer Blunt, yeah, you douche. Anyway, just go get some coffee. Um, you will unlock another achievement here for getting a coffee at Mark's. I don't know if the... You grabbing the other bits of coffee counted earlier on, or if it was just this bit. But, you know, again, it's better to be safe than sorry. Just literally get as much coffee as you can, whenever you can. So grab the three. This is where we get the achievement. I'm thinking it's only this point that the you can actually get the achievement. It, I don't think the other parts matter. But then we can um, sit down and choose Madagascar, first of all. There we go. And then we will be able, actually able to head outside again. Is Officer Blunt shacking up with someone? I'm sure there's only one hotel in town, and she's not staying in that hotel. Is she Is she going out with the priest? Is she going back to that church, or is she going to the old guy's bakery, perhaps? <laughs> anyway, we are going to Overlook Road, because there doesn't seem to be that many um, eligible bachelorettes around this place at the minute, to be honest, in uh, Pineview. <laughs> But we're just going back to the hotel. We're tired. We've had a rough day. We've had a sleep paralysis nightmare last night as well. Man, we just need a cheeky noop. But there's a guitar player here, and we're going to help him out with a cheeky lyric right now. So when he asks you what lyric can uh, fit in and work lovely, choose number two, Drunken Dreams of You and I. I think that is the one that he is sort of most appreciative of. Otherwise, he's probably just like, well, just stick with your day job, detective. Whatever that is. And sorry, that was a bad Simpsons quote. <laughs> so, yeah, Drunken Dreams of You and I, choose, when we choose that, then we'll continue walking to the right, get to the hotel. Then we can just nip in the bathroom, take a bath. Son, you deserve that. And then what we'll do is just turn off the lights, get into our sleep area, go to bed, and then wake up the next morning. Except it's not as simple as that, of course. So we're in another dreamlike sequence now. So all you've got to do is just keep going to the left, falling down off every building, keep going, keep going, keep going until you finally get to the car and then just spam the Y button again. And then we wake up. But again, another part where I absolutely love this bit of music.
So that's us woken up after another horrible night. We're gonna get back into a bit of bit of classic. You know, nothing ever beats a classic. And we've just got three achievements already left to get. But the one for kissing Diane is the one that's actually glitched at the time of this recording. It's the it would have been one of the final achievements you get. So so far, I know the developers are working on a fix for that. Hopefully, again, like I said, it will be soon. But we do end up. Back at the coffee house, the depressed man is back there as well. But what we're going to do is go ahead and grab some more coffee. So choose number four. I need more coffee. So go and do that. Again, you'll have a little conversation with Mark right here. Or maybe not. Maybe he's already stopped asking. He's like, screw off the tech. Just take your coffee and leave. Oh, no. There he goes. There he goes. He, he is nice. You can always count on a guy with glasses to be nice. Except for maybe all the serial killers and stuff with glasses. I wouldn't trust them. Uh, talk to the depressed man once again. Then let's go and talk to Officer Blunt Blunt again. Press 3, discuss the case. And then afterwards we can check the autopsy report. Autopsy, the autopsy, even. Yes, let's just go with it. There's nothing else here apart from more coffee, but man, you, your pee is probably burning through your intestines right now and your gut. You're just probably peeing burnt coffee, and that must hurt, I think. But now we are just back outside on the street, then. We are going to be getting another achievement. There's a photographer who's going to stupidly lose all his photos. <laughs> Oh man, imagine being that scared by a horn you actually <laughs> fall and lose all your photos. So we will be grabbing all them for him. But of course it's never just that simple in any video game. We can't just grab them all and give them to him. There's always going to be one that's missing. And this time it's in the terms of a dog. He's not going to let us get it back. Because why would he? Right then, so just, uh, well, go ahead, go back to the photographer at the minute. It's He's not the one we're interested in, to be honest. It's the guy smoking next to him again, which what we're going to do is, once again, just exhaust all the dialogue options. We'll go ahead and do that. And then afterwards, we will go and talk to Mark, who's just sitting on the bench right there. Lovely job there, San. So let's now nip off to the left and talk to Mark. He will basically give us permission to go rooting through his dustbin right there. And I'm assuming with it just being a cafe, there's not there's not even any nice leftovers or anything. Not that I'm a scavenger and I go hunting through leftover bins, of course. But, you know, a nice hot sandwich would have done if somebody didn't want it. But anyway, we get a bone. And do we think that's good enough for the dog? Let's find out. Mm, no, <laughs> even though dogs usually love bones, obviously on this occasion we don't want it. So we're going to be talking to the old guy in front of the bakery now so we can get a nice little donut or a biscuit. I think his horn is gone now since that woman has left, which is sad news for him. Still limp penis. And I think he's off his rocker at this point as well. So finally, finally, we've got the biscuit. Now we can get the last photo and get the trade-off achievement. Again, this is another story-related one, so you'll get this anyway. But, you know, a bit of a pain in the ass, really. Although we could bite you and be feral and stuff. So we've got that, and now what we're going to do is take them all to the photographer. But we've got a very interesting photograph here. So he does actually allow us to keep it as well. So this... So that actually did come in handy. 
a random car outside. Very, very interesting stuff now going on. Uh, so just go through the dialogue options again with the uh, Mr. Photographer, I'm going to call him, because we don't know his name. So then from here, just go to the right and go to Overlook Road, which uh, is the road we take to go to the hotel. Next, we will go to Central. Now, there's not really, to be honest, there's not, there's not any use in the map, just because since there's only really one way to go, you need to walk past the um, uh, street sign anyway. So there's Central, so we'll go down here next. And then finally, when we get to this bit, again, I do use the map, but like I said, it's we literally have to pass the street signs anyway. And it's the first one, and it's East Hills Road. So there we go. We go down there, and this is where the hospital is. And what we'll be doing is basically just tech, uh, checking out the toxicology reports of Creus and Diane. So start with Diane then. Again, don't think it makes too much of a difference, but you know, that's that's what we're doing right now. And then what we will do then is check her toxicology report and examine both her torso and the hands. The doctor will sort of come to a conclusion and then you'll just do the exact same thing for Chris then. So not a lot going on here, but you are just checking everything. So last bit then, just choose number one, there were two glasses, and once again the doctor will come to another conclusion, so just read on, and you know, this is where you can make a judgement for yourself, you've been playing the game, you've sort of had a little time to think about it now, so what do you guys think happened?
So after the chat with the doctor, we are getting invited to a happy birthday. So say happy birthday to him, or a birthday party, no, not a happy birthday. Um, pick number two again, you guys go ahead. And then choose number one, which is what will I talk to him about. When it pops up, there it is, what will I talk to him about. And then for the last one, just choose number three, fine. Not like we have a choice anyway, but, you know, just just be the nice guy, be the cool dude. And just enjoy yourself, man, you know, I know you haven't slept for two days and you've got a guilty conscience about what I assume is killing your wife by crashing the car, but I'm not jumping into any sort of conclusions just yet. Anyway, we'll go to the left, all the way to the left, and walk along the Happy Valley Road now. So just keep on continuing to the left as you're doing... So there's Happy Valley Road, and again, just watch this for another goddamn beautifully drawn, perfect view. Oh man, this game, this game is bloody stunning, I tell you, absolutely awesome. So we just, I think he's just contemplating his life at the minute. So if you go to the left, we will speak to a man who just happens to be Chris and Diane's sort of closest friend. Well, more Chris's close friend. But with this guy, we will just exhaust all the dialogue options we can when we're in the inside. And now it cuts back to another scene where Chris is waiting at the bus stop and, oh, Diane just appears. And as it turns out, Diane is sort of kind of flaky. She hasn't spoke to him for a couple of weeks and they're all like, bruh. So pick number two, it's good to see you again. And then just after this one, pick the first option, which is I got you something. Which, I don't know, I mean, he's a bit of a bumbling, awkward man at this point. And she's very confident and she just doesn't, you know, she seems loving life, full of confidence. And kind of weird in a really, really good way. I don't know, I, hey, it's, people like different people, but Diane's my kind of girl. Although I am sort of kind of Chris when I first meet people as well. I just talk at the nonsense. I don't know if you can tell. Um, <laughs> a lot of time for those who have watched a lot of my videos. But we are coming up to another achievement now, and we uh, that is for fixing a boat, which Chris has got to do because Diane doesn't want to, which is fair enough. Um, pick the second options. No, I'm not scared. I mean, hey, us men will do anything for our ladies, right? Am I, <laughs> I'm not wrong, am I? At least I hope I'm not wrong. Anyway, let's have a look in the car first. And we'll have to, uh, what we'll do is search it first and we'll get a fuel container. And we'll get a, a pair of scissors as well. So take them both right here. So there's nothing else there at the moment then. So what we need to do now is just fill the car with fuel. Now you have to pick the second option, fill it with fuel. Fill it right up. And then we should be good for now. So we can just exit out of here and then just nip on left to where the boat is. And then use the scissors to cut the rope. I mean, it's all fairly obvious, but 
you know, it's always nicer when you can follow a guide. Uh, exit this then, what we'll do, go back up, pick up the rope. Uh, you can attach it, you can uh, attach it to the plank on the left or the car on the right, doesn't, this really doesn't matter, I just uh, attach it to the car first. So go ahead and do that, and then we can exit again. Go all the way now to the left, and all the way to the left of the boat, that is where we can attach it to the planks. And then... <laughs> And then what we could do then is go back up to the car, drive away. That'll get rid of the planks for us to get the boat going. I mean, somehow it just seems he's done this a really bumbly, awkward way. Surely there's another easier way to do this. Like, I don't know, just... I don't know. I, I don't get paid at all to think. So I'm not going to think. <laughs> but this is the way we do it. Now we've got to remove... The Remove, remove the fuel from the car, put it in the boat. That gets us the achievement for fixing the boat, and we go along a god, another breathtakingly beautiful scene. I mean, seriously, once again, what a goddamn view. I'm a sucker for views and, you know, beautiful backgrounds and things. And this game has d honestly delivered that on so many levels. So once we are at the rock then, you know, I hope you guys have <laughs> enjoyed it as well. Because, yeah, it gets me all tingly inside. Not in a weird way, obviously. But uh, choose number one, I'm happy you're here. And then just exhaust all the dialogue options with a... Uh, Ask her about her passion and what inspires her. Just just copy exactly what I do at this point. And then after talking, run left all the way into the water. And then go back to Diane a little, little bit later on. But just enjoy the moment.
So after that one goddamn beautiful romantic night, now after a few weeks later, Diane's like, you know what, Chris? Get your sweet ass over here, boy. But this is another romantic time, but all we've got left really for the last achievement is uh, just a few dialogue options. There's still a lot more gameplay to go, so the when these dialogue options come up, just choose, uh, pick each choice once. So just go through all the dialogue options. But yeah, this this should, like I said at the minute, at the time of this recording, um, this achievement is glitched for Chris and Diane kissing. Hopefully that'll be fixed soon. But there is still a lot more gameplay to go. So I am ending it in about five minutes or so when we get the final achievement. But I will be putting up another... Another gameplay walkthrough to uh, finish off the game. So hopefully that will be up in the next sort of week or two, hopefully. So there you go. They've had, yep, delicious pizza. They're all good. They're just chilling. At the moment, uh, Diane, after weeks of flakiness, brings up the courage to give him a little, uh, a little peck on the old cheek. Chris is like, bruh, what the hell? But I like that. But now she's like, oh, wait, that felt weird. I, I don't know. Um, no, get the hell out. So pick, hey, you kissed me. And then she's basically, she's very low on uh, self-confidence, which is a very sad thing to see. But choose number three now. I think I'll really like what I find. But she's still like, meh, no. Again, very sad. And then choose number one. When will I see you? And that is that. So that's, you know, the sort of next part of Chris and Diane done. And by now, like I said, the achievement should have unlocked, but it hasn't for whatever reason. Hopefully, again, that will be fixed soon, though. But with that being said, once it does get fixed, that should be the 1,000 out of 1,000. Um, whether Fruist Word Interactive... Um, puts more achievements into the game a little bit later on or unless they're just keeping it there I do hope they sort of put a little bit more in so people uh, Are not forced to but they Kind of are in a way having to finish the game if they want to get all the achievements I think they should have done that just put an achievement for finishing the game It would have been absolutely perfect, but like I said, I'm gonna put a gameplay walkthrough up anyway of the rest of the game so all we're doing here like I said, so there we go then. So that's the one that is glitched. Hopefully, like I said, that will be fixed soon. And all I'm doing for the rest of this gameplay is we're going to look at the, uh, find the guitar player again, give him another lyric when we get to Overlook Road on the way to the hotel. And that'll be the end. But I will leave you now, guys and gals. So thank you so, so much for watching. A big thank you to Fruitwood Interactive for providing me the code enabling me to bring you this 100% achievement guide. I hope you've enjoyed the game and the guide and that it has been a help to you. Don't forget, of course, you can follow me on all my social medias, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and also Patreon now. And yeah, so that's it. Thank you so, so much for watching again, guys and gals. Don't forget, of course, to like, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Big love.